Hey, welcome everybody to the Salty Yak Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Kerry Beeson, and today we are going to talk about what is going with me in my pack in the backcountry for our September archery deer hunt in Arizona. Now, the stuff in this pack probably will really relate to if you're going to a September archer or a September archery elk hunt. Okay, so probably a lot of the same gear. Uh, if you're looking at it for that. So all of the stuff I'm going to show you, we're going to have links to in the show notes. Also, I'm going to give you the the actual weights of a lot of the things that I have in my pack. I've actually weighed them myself. So these are the actual weights, not the manufacturer's weights, because sometimes those can be a little hinky. But this is going to be the actual weights. So some of you can already see that this podcast is going to be video recorded too and put out on the Salty Yak YouTube along with just my, the regular audio that we do. I'm hopefully going to do a good enough job that if you're just driving down the road, you it's interesting for you to listen to, but you may want to go look at the Salty Yak YouTube and actually watch it if you have some questions about some of the gear. All right? Let's get started right quick. First thing is let's talk about, we're going to talk pack and sleep system. So first thing, the pack. I've had this pack for several years. So this is a Kufaro uh, duplex light frame. And what I have on here, what I'm going to take with me is my Hellbender bag that's on here. Now the Hellbender bag, I think is like, comes in like, 3,200 cubic square inches to, to assist with this. Now I have a Nalgene holder on each side. We'll talk more about, uh, my hydration system that I have for it, but I have one, one on each side. So there's two Nalgene's on the hip belt. The other thing I've taken that goes along with this is the guide lid, which just clips onto the top of it. Clips on here, rides right there. So just gives me a little extra storage for stuff that I need to get ac quick access to. So I don't have the guide lid on there right now because I've been doing my rucking and I didn't need it for my rucking. So let's see what's in the pack. Open it up here. First thing we're going to roll with is... The tent. I told you I was going to do weights, right? So this whole pack, guide lid included, is 7.6 pounds. Okay? Whole pack with the guide lid is 7.6 pounds. So my tent. So my tent. This is a lunar solar solo tent. You use a, uh, you can use a trekking pole to put it up. I went ahead and bought the carbon stay so if i wanted to i can leave it up and use it like a spike camp but i've got my little i bought the little carbon stays for it so here's the tent got my so the total weight on this is 2.2 .2 pounds with the stakes the pole and the tent now i probably won't have it in the bag in a tent i'll just shove it in the bottom but here's the tent uh I have only got to sleep in this thing one night, but it did great. So uh, easy to set up. It's the lightweight. So what I replaced, so I had a Big Agnes Copper Spur Ultralight two-person tent. Great tent. Love that tent. Slept several nights in that tent slept me and nicholas in that tent one night together it's gr it's a lot of room if you're just sleeping by yourself and you can squeeze two people in and y'all seen my son nicholas he's a pretty big boy uh but me and him slept in that no problem i have loved that tent but the problem was it was coming in at just over three pounds so i went to this whole tent setup just to be lighter so that's the tent. <clears throat> I 
my sleeping pad. Now, this this is the only backpacking sleeping pad that I've had. And the what I'm looking at here when we go to Arizona is possibly going out and staying two to three nights living off my back looking for these coosters. All right. So this is the only sleeping pack I've, I've had. It's a it's a Nemo. A Nemo Tensor Alpine. This one's a long and wide. Well, it's it's insulated. Uh when I first tested this here in the house, Bella came walking over and walked across it with her little puppy dog claws, poked holes in it. I was able to seal it up and I have had or patch it up. And I've had no air leaks at all with it. But really like this. It sleeps warm. It has a R rating of 4.8, which is really good. Now, this whole pad, it's a little heavy for a pad. It's 1.46 pounds. But it does the job of keeping you warm and insulated from the ground. Absolutely, positively love this pad. And like I said, I've used it for three years now, and it has worked very well for me. So, oh, well, let's pull one more thing out. So, along with the tent is I have a Tyvek sheet that I bought off Amazon. It's got the little grommets on it. So, I put this, I have to clear all the sticks and rocks away the best I can. I put this down and then put my tent on top of it. And it was really well. This is pretty light. If you actually could throw these in the washing machine, I would recommend throwing them in with some towels or some other stuff to wash them. As you can see here, kind of roll this out. One end didn't get very, it's still like the original state. But some of it, We've got a, l a little softer just because of the video. A little softer than, uh, than the other stuff. Uh, the new washer that we have doesn't have the agitator in the middle like the old ones. So I would recommend throwing this. I'm going to wash it probably a couple more times, but throw it in with some towels or something. And I think it'll, it'll, it'll help stiffen it up or un. Excuse me, unstiffen it a little bit more. So what else do we have in here? Ah, uh, some people would call this a luxury item, not me. So this is a uh, climate. Uh, what are they? Hang on. I got my notes over here. Let me make sure I'm looking at the right thing. A climate lux, L-U-X pillow. Right, love this thing. So it's got a, it's got like a little soft multi or not micro fleece kind of, almost uh, flannel kind of feel to the outside of it, and then it has the air blighter inside of it. So you could take this off and wash it. Absolutely, positively love this thing. So this pillow comes in at seven ounces. I replaced a Climate Pillow X. And it was, you blow it up and it had a kind of X pattern in the middle of it. Uh, but it just moved around way too much, way too much. This one doesn't. It's a little bit bigger pillow, a little softer. Really, really like this one. And let's see what else I've have in here. <gasps> it's a quilt. It is an 850 fill power duck down treated down quilt this is a catabatic quilt uh i've got to use this for two years now and i have slept out in the tent and temperatures probably 20 degrees no problem at all absolutely love it it's got a foot box built in it so when you you get it when you lay it over you and tuck it in. You can stick your feet in this foot, this foot box, and it keeps it, you know, from moving around and keeping your, it helps keep your feet warm. Absolutely love this. I replaced my old military woobie with it. Now that military woobie was synthetic. 
uh, and it, this thing being down, it just compresses down to absolutely positively hardly anything. You can shove in any crack and crevice that's in your pack. Uh, love it for that, but I love it for the, for the, for the comfort and the warmth of it. It, the whole quilt, 1.3 pounds. So I got rid of that military quilt, which was a little, or that military wooby was a little bit more than that. It didn't pack as well. And I went to this one and absolutely positively love it. So there's only one more piece of the sleep system that I have. Some of you probably, probably going to get some hate over this one. I have a flex tail. So when I originally heard about them, this is the, I think the mini pump. First time I heard about them, I was like, no. And then Curtis bought one. And when we were out on a hunting trip, he used it. I let, I'm watching him blow up his air mattress. And I went, can I borrow that? <laughs> so this thing weighs a whole three and a half ounces. And it's got a little plug here on the side where you just, you've got a USB hook up to it and you just recharge it off your, your battery pack, which we're going to talk about a little bit more too, because there's a, I'm all about if I can just recharge stuff with my battery pack. I've already got the battery pack anyway to, to charge up my cell phone, my Garmin in reach. So if I still have it and I could charge this with it, if I need to. And from some of the stuff that I heard on it, you could like inflate and it deflates your air mattress for you really sucks all the air out of it so you can pack it down even tighter in your pack uh they're talking like you can go you can blow up your air mattress eight times with this uh before you had to recharge it so that's certainly probably uh, at least for me is going to be a whole outing out before i need to recharge it so that's my sleep system right now been happy with it i said i've replaced a few things uh, but this is what I'm going to roll with in September when we go to Arizona. So let's move on to other necessities that I have in the pack. All right, let's talk what other necessities I have in the pack. So first thing, headlamp. Got to have a headlamp. So this is a Phoenix can't read it it's too small look at my notes phoenix hm 50r v 2.0 so listening to the hunt back or hunt the back country podcast they talked about these i love it i've had it for a while i've been i've been playing with it when i've been doing some of the early or late night rucking um you can actually, it's got a USB port right here on the bottom. You can recharge it like that. I love that. I love, I've never seen this before, but here's a replacement battery that I carry with it. It has a USB hookup too. So I can charge both of them off of my external battery. Let's say, you know, doing something middle light, got an animal down and you, know, you run this one dry, then I can plug, I can put this one in. And recharge the other one while I am still working on uh, the animal or doing whatever. But I can recharge one while I'm using the other one, which makes this thing absolutely great. 2.75 ounces. So I had a black diamond storm that I was using. It was like I think a little over three ounces. Not much savings, but the battery thing is is what gets me. And let me... Uh, let me give you an example. <clears throat> With the new one, maximum, if you run it on max power, 700 lumens. It has six different modes, including two red light modes. Uh, if I run it on high on max, three hours at runtime. If I run it on medium, which is 400 lumens, eight hours. If we're running a low, uh, 42 hours. So I just wouldn't, I mean, the at max lumens with that, uh, black diamond storm was only 430 lumens. So more light lasts longer and lighter. That's why I went with the Phoenix 
And now the Black Diamond Storm is just my using around camp cooking dinner headlight now, where I can have extra uh, AAA batteries to do it if it, if it runs out. All right. If you hunt in the back country, you know what this is. You need one of these. You know, they're about 200 bucks, and then you get a subscription plan. This is the Garmin InReach. I think this isn't the newest one. I got a deal on it because they were selling these because they were coming out with the newest one. But there's nothing, just sending messages back and forth uh, to home or to whomever uh, works absolutely positively great. I've got a Bluetooth with my phone, and you use it just like you're, you're messaging anything else. So absolutely positively love that. So I've got this little pouch that hooks up inside my pack. And this, because we talk about all this recharging stuff, right? External battery. This is a 20,000 milliamp battery. I've had this sucker for years. It's got four USB ports in it. It works great. I haven't had any problem with it. I bought it off Amazon. Uh, there's a lot of reviews out there on, on external batteries. This one, it just works great for me. But also in the little pack, I carry, what is it? I carry every cord, one for my phone, one for my Garmin, uh, one for the headlamp. And so I've got all these different ones. So they'll fit anything that I need to recharge. Okay. Pretty easy. And, but I keep it, got bag. I keep them all in this little bag that's attached inside my pack. So it's super easy to find. It's hangs up. So if you open that pack, it hangs right up at, at the top of it. So, uh, anytime I need to recharge something, uh, I, uh, just use this. I've cut down on the double A batteries, extra batteries that I had to take. Also, uh, at one point we were talking about the things that, that I no longer take. I no longer carry a solar panel with me. You know, always afraid of, you know, stuff dying out there. So moving on to something else. So <laughs> Mola, motor roller, <laughs> I can't even say it. Motor roller radio. And I bought some new earpieces to go with it. Uh, these are more like the ones we wear at work. Uh, we've already te Curtis has already tested them. They work great. So we found last year in Arizona, somebody sitting on the spotter and kind of guiding somebody into where the DR was freaking great. We had never done that before. And as long as it's allowed by law in the area that we're hunting, we're going to continue to do this. Now, another thing where it comes in really handy uh, like where we're going to in Arizona, we're probably going to be splitting up glassing different areas, but we're going to probably, as the crow flies, not more than a mile apart. We're both going to be up on high points. We could talk to each other on the radios, you know, who are you, you know, versus spotty cell service and trying to text. You can just talk to them on the radio. I found these neat little things are little, uh, 3d printed triple a better care battery carriers. So, uh, Unfortunately, the radio runs off triple A's, uh, so I have to carry some triple A's, but this is what I carry them in. So, uh, radios have been pretty damn handy while we're doing this. All right, what else is in the pack? So, I have this MSR Mini Works water filter. Never used this thing. Hadn't had the opportunity to use it. But I've taken it to Arizona because I don't know what the water is going to be like when we first get there. Now, most likely, before we take off on going into the backcountry, we're going to have an idea what the water situation is. Is it a dry year? Is there water everywhere? So when we were there in January, not January, it's, it, when we were there at the end of March on the bear hunt, there was water everywhere. There was water pouring down the hiking paths that we were hiking down. I didn't need this because I didn't need to filter the water. Now, if I've got a, we found some water tanks, some cattle water tanks. So if those are the only water source, I will be filtering the water out of that cattle water trough. Uh, but if the water's just clear and running, no problem at all. Bingo. 
old stereo pin, super easy. Dip your Nalgene down in there, turn it on, and it's got a little UV light in there. And you just spin it around until the UV light goes out. Easy pachisi, done. So uh, I'm going to have both. I don't think I'm going to have to carry both. Uh, we will see. Now, while we're talking this, let's talk a little bit about a uh, hydration system I'm running now. <clears throat> Nalgene bottles. I like Nalgene bottles more than uh, the bladder. And I've been a big Camelback guy. I still use a Camelback uh, if the situation calls for it. But shout out to Emilio. So Texas Outdoors podcast. When we were at TAC, he went and got one of these uh, hard side hydration systems. Showed it to us. And almost everybody in the group bought one. I bought one when I got back home. Uh, did a little more research on it, uh, ordered one, got it in, went ahead and ordered one of their, their Nalgene. So to give you an idea, this is a 48 inch Nalgene. It's the tall one. You fill this thing full of water. It weighs 3.8 pounds. You take the little shorter ones, the uh, 32 ounce ones, seven point or seven, duh, 2.7 pounds full of water. So they're, they're pretty heavy. So. In taking that bladder out of the pack and using the the Nalgene holders on the side of my pack or the, on the on the hip belt, it frees up more room in my pack than having that Nalgene or having that bladder in the pack, and I don't have to worry about anything poking a hole in the bladder. So the hydration system. So you order it, you get this. It's the little screw on cap. You get the tube that goes down into it, and then you got a, a connector here because they'll give you a hose with the little uh, with the little mouthpiece on it, like you would have in a normal one. So what I do is take this when I'm using it, I just pop the lid off. I hang on to that; I don't lose it. But then you take this one, and you just screw it down in there with the water in there. Now, if you have the shorter one, you don't have to cut the tube; you just shove it down in there, and it bends. So you can go back and forth between the big ones and the little ones and not have any problem. Now, what I did have to do, I had to put a little zip tie right there because what when I was first hiking, this thing would just come unhooked and uh, that was no good. I'd been, I could feel water dripping down my side and it was coming out of my tube. And so, but one little zip tie right there fixed it all. Didn't have any problem with that. The only other improvement I did was, so this is a camelback hose off a camelback that I have. Uh, with my setup where my Nalgene sit on my, on my hip belt, the tube that they provided was a little short. I needed something with a little bit more length. Voila, this solves a problem. and. It's got the little neoprene cover, insulated cover on it. Works great. Great little mouthpiece that I'm used to. And hey, it even matches my pack. You can't, you know, hey, little OCD, it even matches my packs. Um, two other things that go along with my hydration system. I bought a little Nalgene insulated thing. So I put my Nalgene in this and then I stick it in my my little now you can hold her on my side of my belt. No problem at all. Kind of like it. Uh, probably just going to run one. Uh, the other thing is, if we find out that we get there and it's super dry and we're going to backpack in there, I still have a bladder, right? So I can actually hook my filter straight to this thing, filter the water into it, four liter batter, bladder, uh, I hope I don't need this, but if it's super dry, then if we have a hard time finding water. I'm probably going to have to pack water in, but uh, we shall see. So moving on, my little camp setup, All right, my little cookie setup. Carry, well, it says Nemo, but it's not Nemo. I just use the bag, but it keeps all of my cooking stuff in one area, right? Let's open up here. Let's see what we have. 
So first thing, this is just, let me sit this down here. Oh, hmm. look. One of my USB cords that fell out of my little packager. So this is my, my stove. I've been running this same type of stove for five years now. It's just a simple Primus stove. I like this because I'm going to show you something here in a minute. I like the way the stuff sits on it. Now, it doesn't have a wind guard, but I usually can set up somewhere where I, that's not an issue. Or it hasn't been an issue, at least. I had to buy a new one because my old one melted. Somebody who listens to the podcast knows what I'm talking about. They're feeling a little guilty. They're probably laughing right now. But I had to buy a new one. So here's the, the here's the, the the thing to think about. When you're screwing that on to the fuel thing, make sure you screw it all the way on. And this is a, a if you're cooking inside your tent, which probably is not the best idea, especially if you're around bear country or whatever. Uh, if you don't screw it all the way down, you can have a fire inside your tent. And this stuff, there were there's all this little uh Sill polys and all this stuff is made out of oil, right? It will go quickly. You or or you burn a big old hole in your tin or your ground tarp or, or whatever. So this piece of equipment I have had probably thirty years. This is my Marine Corps issue canteen cup. Absolutely, positively love this thing. Right. And the thing I love about it with that Primus is it gives me a big surface to set that thing on. Right. So I can cook in this. I can do whatever, you know, Marine Corps, we shaved out of them if we were in the field or whatever, but uh, kept it clean and uh, absolutely positively love this thing. So this is what I take to cook all my, my, my food or, or warm up my water for my meals, that kind of thing. Got to have the long-handled titanium utensil. I like a spoon versus the spork, uh, but that's what I run with. I run with the spoon. So one, you know, if one, what do they say? One is none. So I have several lighters that I carry. I probably could just carry two, but I end up with three. I like this one because it's got a little extension on it. You know, just buy them at the gas station. Uh, these, I bought these. Why? Because they have an elk on them. So I thought that I thought that was cool. So I've, I've got three. I probably can. I could probably only run with two. Um, but you always carry those. Keep them sealed up. And then the last thing, I have one of the small cans that goes with me. Uh, this one's brand new. Hadn't even, hadn't even opened it up. It'll probably work all the hunting season for me. Right. So that's what's in my hunting setup or my, not my hunting setup, my cooking setup. Uh, and I hadn't changed any of this. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a jet boil. That Primus is like, I think 30 bucks. It's cheap. It works. Like I said, it doesn't have a wind guard, so you have to keep it out of the wind. But for what I have used it for since we started hunting in Nebraska, uh, no problem. I have literally sat down, put it between my legs, and put my pack in front of me as the wind guard, <clears throat> you know, and cook breakfast with it. So I uh, hadn't seen any need to, to change any of this. The only thing I've changed, I went to a small bottle. I didn't know that they existed. I found those last year that they had small ones. So absolutely, positively love that. So the other thing that I've taken to Arizona that I wish I would have had last time is this Traverse tarp. So this is a nine and a half by nine and a half tarp with, you add in, I got my tent stakes for it. And I haven't put it together yet, but I've got some guy line and I've got some little uh, attachments so you can kind of adjust the, the length of it all together, one pound. 
one pound. That's it. Why am I taking this to Arizona? Because last year, where we were, our glassing spots were up on these rocky knobs, and that's where they're going to be this year. And when that sun pokes out, there was nowhere to hide. So this is literally going to be my sunshade uh, during the day. Uh, and for me, the, the one pound is more than the worth it to take it up there. So, you know, me and my buddy can sit in the shade in glass, take a nap, you know, Lord for, you know, maybe it rains on us. Who knows? Uh, so those are some of the necessities that I have in the pack. Let's talk about my first aid kit. So let me spin around here. And here is my first aid kit. So this sucker weighs a pound and a half. I don't know that I'm willing to, to lighten it. So let's just kind of walk through what's in my first aid kit. Open it up first. A chest seal. So you can't put a tourniquet on everything. You can bet that there's a tourniquet in there. So this is, Lord forbid, you, you get a puncture in your lung area and you're losing the air out of your lungs. So you have to have two. Lord forbid you, uh, you accidentally took a bullet. So there's an entry hole. There's an exit hole. You got to cover both of them. Chest seal. Cheap. Buy them off Amazon. Some gauze, or they say top sponges, cigars. Quick clot. Quick story. We were hunting in Hawaii when I was stationed there. We were hunting goats up in like some pretty steep ridges is what they were on. And we're crawling up this one ridge to uh, get in a better position to get on these goats. And I fell. And one of my arrows came out of my quiver and by the grace of God, it went point down. And when I fell, I took the knock of the arrow right down the side of my neck. If it would have been the broadhead, uh, not saying it would have killed me, but man, it would have left a nasty gash. So, some quick clot. You should have some in your pack. And this is a, uh, this, this is actually a quick caught quick clot gauze so you can kind of like pack it in the wound oh look there's another one i have an emergency blanket if i need it in there some roll of gauze pressure bandage right so that cut on the side of your neck you get a, a, a pretty bad laceration and pressure bandage oh look because what one is none I have two more gauze, ace wrap bandage, liquid. Well, this would be super glue, but this is actually the liquid skin, the medical version of it. I bought it off all of this stuff. I just bought off Amazon. And last and definitely not least. Two tourniquets. Lord forbid you ever need them, but I have two tourniquets in my, my thing, and uh, that's what is in my first aid kit. It's a pound and a half, but when you really need it, do you really, it, it's going to be worth it, right? I, I don't think there's anything in there that I would say that I'm not going to take. I've kind of thought over this what I know how to use, what I can use, what I want. Uh, Lord forbid anything ever bad happens to us while we're in the backcountry. But I'm not going to pare down to make it lighter. I'm just going to take what I got. All right. So let's talk about how I might get injured. Maybe from my kill kit. Let's talk about the kill kit. And I like these bags. And I like that they're hunter's orange because when they're down in my pack, they're easy to find. Now, I probably could lighten my kill kit up a little bit, but I don't know that I'm going to. 1.9 pounds is uh, what my kill kit weighs. So let's open it up. First things first, I carry my extra release in my kill kit. 
Okay, so I know where it's at. I know it's in my kill kit if I need it. My crocodile wipes, I take some of them and put them in a Ziploc so I can clean my hands afterwards. See, again, I, I probably could get rid of that. Probably wouldn't need that. So in Arizona, we have an electronic tag, so you have to have something to to write on, write with, and attach it to your animal. So duct tape wrapped around my silver Sharpie. That's what's going to be my tag when I shoot that mule deer or I shoot that coos deer in Arizona, and they give me the E number, that's what's going on the deer. So, you know, in Texas, I do the E tag anyway, so this is what I use for that. But so make sure you have something because you're, you know, you're going to be successful. So make sure you have what you need to, to write it on there. Um, since I'm only going to shoot coos deer or maybe a mule deer, I'm only taking two game bags. Okay. Uh, and these are caribou gear, gear bag, or not gear, not gear bags. Um, meat bags. Uh, so. They've got the little hangers. I can hang them up. Uh, reflective strips on them. They got all that stuff. But I'm only going to take two. Figure out to be able to get a whole coos deer or mule deer. You know, front shoulders. You know, the four quarters in the ass plus whatever other meat I could scratch off of. I think I could do it in three or two. Maybe I might add three, but I think two is fine. So let's talk about knives. So I could probably get away with taking one knife. Uh, you know, I hear people, I've heard people talk about they don't like a Havilon. Uh, this is an outdoor edge. Um, the replaceable blades, I, I love them. You know, just don't cut yourself because they will do a damn good job cutting it. So I've got the little, set this down here, got the little carrying case. I've got my extra blades in there. Um, and this works really well on, you know, I could take a deer completely apart with this. Now what I do, I do carry one other knife and I carry a fixed blade knife. Uh, this is for, you know, any little, you know, cutting through the sternum. I do like the, you know, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of a gut hook. Uh, but then a buddy of mine bought me this knife and, uh, I really like that gut hook for just opening up and getting this, getting the initial cuts on the skin so I can start skinning it. Uh, but I like a fixed blade for when I'm doing the, taking the joints and stuff apart versus the, the Havilon. I like using this one when I take the joints and stuff apart. Uh, and if you're having to, you know, you're cutting his head off cause you got to take his head out you know, cutting through those vertebrae and cutting in between them. Uh, for me, a fixed blade knife just works better. So 1.9 pounds for my kill kit, right? So um, it's a little heavy, I guess. Uh, but that's that's what I like, and that's, that's what I'm going, going with. Oh, the only other thing that I might take, and it'll, this will be dependent upon weather. I may throw some hot hands in there. You know, they say you pack your fears. And when we talk about the longer list of what I no longer take, um, you can see what kind of my fears are. Uh, one of them's being cold. I don't like being cold. So if it's going to be cold, I might throw some hot hands in there. So that, that, that may go in there. They'll be in the big tote. You see the big tote over here? That's got to have everything in it back at base camp. So if I need to change out some stuff, I can always uh, swap it out. That's where my, my hot hands will be if I need to, to do that. All right, let's see what's next. Let's see. I think next. Oh, let's talk. We'll tell you, we're going to talk food and what clothes are in the pack. So let me kind of move some of this stuff around and we'll be right back with food and what kind of clothes I have in the pack. All right, let's talk about food and the clothes I carry in the pack. But first, I left off one other little important item that I carry in my pack. I told you I like these little, these little 
Hunter's Orange. These are all from Kefaro. A bunch of people make these little packable bags. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this one is, I call it my med kit, but this one is one I keep close to the top of my pack so I can get to Band-Aids if I need them. This is something, Luco tape. If you're hunting in the backcountry, doing backpacking, could be a multi-use item, but man, if it comes to you getting hot spots on your heels or somewhere on your feet, this comes in super, super handy. Got a little pill bottle that I put my medicine that I need. And something, yes, I cut the handle off my toothbrush but it was more so it fit in here than because of weight. But medicine in the morning, brush my teeth in the morning. Oh, that's my toothbrush, my toothpaste. Keep my little, some Neosporin close. And, oh, Carmex or chapstick, something, you know, you get out there, your little dry lips. A pair of tweezers. Now I started carrying these when we went to South Texas hunting now guy to pull the cactus out of my legs at the end of the night. But we're going to Arizona, right? These just stay in my little pack. So at the end of the night, if I'm sitting there, if I got some cactus or something like this, uh, I can pull out my little tweezers and uh, go to work on it. So just my little quick med kit or early morning kit, just so I can brush my teeth, take my medicine, you know, put a Band-Aid on if I need to, whatever, got all that. All right, let's talk about food. Uh, this is the stuff I've been running for a little while. I love it. Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, I, I tried Mountain House at first, but uh, I found that the Peak Refuel is, uh, I like it a lot better. This uh, beef stroganoff is delicious. The breakfast skillet in the morning if you want a hot breakfast, that's delicious. If you really, 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 really want to treat yourself, the peach cobbler or the mountain berry cobbler, oh my God. If you want to treat yourself at the end of a night, end of a long day, this stuff here is great. Uh, something that I do do with it, so you see this big package that this comes in. Got this again from the Hunt the Back uh, Country podcast from the XO guys. I repackage them. So, you see, that's a gallon Ziploc right there, right? So, they, they say, on average, you should count for two pounds of food per day, on average. So, but what I'll do is, so this is a microwavable safe Ziploc bag, right? So I will take the contents out of this, put it into this bag, take the little uh, moisture absorber out of it, seal it all the way down. I just pulled these out of the freezer. So when I got back from the hunting trip and I didn't use these, I just stuck them in the freezer so they wouldn't absorb any, absorb any moisture. But you can see how small you can get that down to versus this right and you remember that nice little canteen cup i have so i take this i put it inside that canteen cup uh well actually kind of the whole process take the canteen cup you heat up the water first get your water hot you open this up you pour your hot water in you stir it all around and then you take this and you put it inside that canteen cup while it's still marinating and absorbing all the water once it's done all that, then you just open the zipper up and it literally folds around the edges of the top of the canteen cup. And then I just take my long handled spoon, I eat it all out of the can, eat it out of that. And I pop this off, zip it up. Guess what? My canteen cup is still clean. I don't have to wash it. I have a Ziploc that I have to carry around and throw it in another, probably I carry a, a gallon Ziploc to have my trash in. But it works excellent. Works absolutely positively excellent. And the, there's one, two, there's, I've got four, well this isn't a meal, this is the mountain berry cobbler. 
So three meals and a dessert. And I still could fit maybe one or two more in that gallon Ziploc. So press it down. I'll go throw these back in the freezer when we're done. But that is a hot tip about putting them in the, so that's a quart bag. This is a gallon. The ones inside there are quart bags. They just keep your microwavable safe quart bag. Break down your meals and uh, it saves you some room in your pack. Other things I like to take on the trip to eat. <laughs> so, you know, the, we, we all know how expensive these are, right? $13, $15 uh, a package. Top Ramen, cents. I don't even know how, was it seven cents a package? 20 cents a package, something like that now. But I tell you what, you know, put some water in that canteen cup, heat it up, cook my ramen in there, put the little fr flavor in there. Lots of carbs, some good salt, because you've been sweating all day out there on the hunt. Super, super light. Does it matter if it gets crunched up? No. Love throwing a couple packages of top ramen. And, you know, these make some great, I've had them for lunch sometimes, sitting there, you know, waiting for, on a glass and spot, waiting for uh, something to happen. Eat a package of Top Ramen. Love it. Uh, I do carry some uh, oatmeal when I want a hot breakfast. i got time, or if I'm sitting up on the glass knob and I want to have, you know, second breakfast. Got some oatmeal. Snacks. Uh, this is kind of what I've run down to. Um, I do like a Cliff Bar. And these are the chocolate chip ones, so I like those. Uh, usually run, uh, you know, some kind of Nature Valley, some kind of sweet and salty kind of thing. Uh, everybody talks about gummies. I'm not a huge gummy fan, but man, I love these Welch's fruit snacks. Probably the exact same thing, but I don't know. For some reason, I like these. I'm not a huge gummy fan. And then, of course, you know my favorite is, is a good solid payday. Uh, I will buy the king size ones when I'm out on a hunt. Uh, of course, you can eat half of it and save the other half for later. And like I've told you all a million times, the reason I like them is they don't melt. There's no chocolate in here. You know, the chocolate in this thing might melt, but there ain't no chocolate in this. So the heat's not going to bother. And it's got the peanuts, it's got salt, it's got some sugar. You know, for me, if there was a perfect backpacking snack, this might be it for me. Certainly for me. Maybe for you. So... Let's talk about what clothes I am carrying in the pack. And this is going to go quick because I'm not carrying it for a two or three day little backpack trip in September. Not carrying a whole lot. Not planning on it getting, you know, really, really cold. Uh, but, you know, something that if it drops down in the freezing, I can still be okay. So, my first piece. <clears throat> Could I find something smaller? Probably. Could I take a puffy and, and probably get something, you know, a little more packable? Maybe. But I tell you, what, I have fell in love with the Sitka Jetstream jacket. Uh, it's warm. It cuts the wind. It's not rainproof, but it is, you know, rain resistant or water resistant. I've had this thing probably three years now. I've worn it in. A scouting trip in Utah where it was cold. It would be, a, you know, in the mornings it was 40 degrees. Uh, worn it in the rain. Uh, taking it, taking this thing on every hunt for the last three years. Now, the, the, the drawback, it is not real packable. It's not like a, it's not like a, uh, a puffy jacket would be. But puffy jacket doesn't cut wind. Puffy jacket you know, doesn't stand up to rain. This does. I slept in this thing. It, I, I absolutely positively love it. And it's got a little hood. So this is my little, this is my go-to, do everything, favorite jacket, favorite hunting jacket right here. <clears throat> Another thing I like, if I need a mid layer, I usually just take this, you know, I might sleep in this if it's cold. This is just a con, what they call, it's made by Condor, bought it off Amazon. Uh, but Condor's a, I've known Condor name brand for a while, just in the, the tactical apparel. Um, but it's a grid fleece. So it's just got little grids in it, right? That help trap your heat. 
Uh, I've got a green one and I've got a black one. Um, absolutely, positively love it. Uh, I can wear it underneath that uh, jet stream and I can be good to below freezing uh, and stay warm with it. So absolutely, those are two pieces that pretty much go with me on every hunt uh, that I take them on. They go on every hunt, and not every hunt that I take them on. But they go they go with me all the time because I absolutely, I love them and I believe them. They kept me warm, so I like them. I always take a beanie because we talked about what do you fear? I fear being cold. And most of the time the beanie could be like, could be, you know, we're going to Arizona in September in the mountains. It could be chilly in the morning, right? Might want a beanie. It could be chilly at night. I might want to sleep in my beanie, which if it's really cold, uh, I usually do. I'll sleep in my beanie. But i uh, got my little, uh, my little Sitka beanie here. Love it. And uh, I'll take it to carry along with that. And of course, I always carry an extra pair of darn tough socks. You know, you've got to take care of your feet when you're out there. Luco tape, you know, you can take yeah, I carry an extra pair. You know, I usually wear a pair for a day or two, uh, and they're, with the merino wool, it's not too bad. But I have the backup pairs. There's nothing like putting on a clean, fresh pair of socks. And if you find some water, you might be able to rinse out your old pair. You know, and just kind of rotate them in and out. But uh, always carry an extra pair of socks. Absolutely love that. All right, we're going to talk about next is what do I? So that's everything that's in the the pack. Everything that I. I I've gone through, it's on my packing list. That's everything that I carry in the pack, minus some of the optic stuff. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute too. Uh, but even with the optics, this is weighed with my optics. So that whole pack with everything I've shown you so far that I've taken is 40 pounds. That's counting two Nalgene bottles that are full of water. The only thing that doesn't count in that 40 pounds is my food. I had, I didn't, when I weighed it, I didn't have my food packed in there, but that was basically everything in the pack, uh, including my optics. Now, it doesn't account for the bow. We'll talk about the bow here in a minute, too. Uh, but that's 40 pounds, and then I usually end up taking a, a couple little other things, it seems like. In my average pack weight seems to be 45-ish pounds right around there. I guess 45 pounds with maybe with food. So there you go with that. All right, let's talk about what I actually wear when we go on the hunt. All right, let's talk about what I'm actually wearing on the hunt. First thing, pants. So these are Wrangler ATGs, all terrain gear, and these are just a you know, they're in a kind of a brown olive color, just a solid pattern. You know, I think these run like 40 bucks. I'm on year three with these. Absolutely, positively love them. Uh, uh, also, this is a pair of Sitka Traverse pants that I bought in the subalpine pattern. Um, Knowing what I, I, I like these pants, I wear them, but knowing what I know now, I would have saved my money and just bought the Wrangler ATG pants. Uh, they're solid colors. I don't need camo, especially on my bottom half. Uh, the Sitka is nice, but I could have saved the money and bought two pair, two more pair of the, uh, the Wrangler ATGs. I've had them for three years. I've been hunting in them. I ruck in them all the time. I haven't worn them out yet. Uh, love the Wrangler ATGs. So what am I wearing on the top? <clears throat> We're going to Arizona and, you know, probably any, uh, probably just any hut. In, I don't have a short sleeve hunting shirt. That's not a, like for dove hunting. So what I've got here is the synthetic Sitka long sleeve. I don't know what, what model this one is. Is it going to say, let's look. No, nope, doesn't say. It's just their long sleeve synthetic shirt. And this one's in subalpine. Uh I like the synthetic shirt. It dry it's to me it's a little cooler and it dries a lot quicker. 
And we're going to be you know, anywhere that you're hunting, where you're going to be perspiring, you know, hiking and perspiring a lot, especially in an early season hunt. I really like this shirt, but I do carry with me a merino wool long sleeve. So this one is a first light, and it has it's got the hoodie. I know there's a lot of people that really like that sun hoodie. Um, I could take it or leave it. It's okay, but I like the merino wool. If it's going to be a little cooler, maybe in the morning, because this works well when it's hot too. And the merino wool supposedly doesn't stink as bad if you, you know, when you get all sweaty and stuff. Um, but I like it too. So depending on how I'm feeling that day, I might go with synthetic or I might go with this light merino wool one. Of course, got to have a hat. This is a Sitka, uh, one in um, the subalpine. Kind of like that pattern. like it for, for bow hunting. So uh, I got my Sitka hat I take with me. So I also have a, this is a very lightweight camo neck gaiter. Number one, I could pull it up. You know, if I don't have a hood, I could pull it up, you know, over the back of my head. And it's a, it's a sunshade as well as when they get in close, get ready to make a shot. I could pull it up and uh, it gives me, you know, kind of covers my face a little bit. Uh, to give me a little camouflage. Now, if y'all follow me on Instagram, you'll know I have told y'all you need to practice like you hunt. So if you hunt covering your face with a net gator, you need to practice covering your face with a net gator, right? Because it's a little different feel when you pull back with that release of where your anchor point is. So if you're hunting with a net gator, practice with net gator. Same thing with this next item. So I like wearing gloves, one for camo, two for hand protection. We're hiking around in these rocks and all the stuff that's sticky and pokes you and all that. So I like a good pair of gloves. So these are PIG, P-I-G, gloves. It stands for Performance Enhanced Gear. If you just go look them up uh, on the internet, I, I, they fit my hands really, really well. So I used to run mechanics gloves, and I could get up a, a season or two out of those. So far, these have held up really well, but they fit my hand really. So where I found these was some of our where our tactical guys were using these. So they have really good dexterity in these gloves, so they could run their pistols and they could run their rifles while wearing a glove. I mean, you can pick up a penny off the ground with these things. Uh, and I have several pair of, pairs of them now. Um, so these pig gloves have replaced my mechanics gloves. And these just have to be in multicam. I like those. I also have some in some solid colors. Uh, but And the ones I like, so you can get the ones that have the Velcro. The Velcro's over your wrist. I like the ones I can just slip on. Uh, I, I don't like that Velcro. One, it makes noise. Two, sometimes it gets in my way, and I don't like it. I just like these ones that pull up. They fit tight to my wrist. Love the pig gloves. And, of course, darn tough socks. Darn, darn tough merino wool socks is what I'm wearing. So I found this through, what's his podcast? It is the Mindful Hunter podcast. Jay Nickel out of... uh Columbia, or not Columbia, Canada. So he recommended, it's, this is called an arcade, like the arcade game, the arcade belt. So it's just a stretchy belt. Now, I wondered, so these are plastic connectors, belt, plastic belt buckle, right? I wondered how that was going to hold up. So I've had this belt for three years. I bought me an extra one just in case. But man, uh, as far as comfort, Holding up my pants, rucking, even with my pack riding on the back of it. No problems whatsoever. Uh, arcade belt. Buy them off Amazon. All the, all these links, it'll take, it'll take me a minute to put all these links in the show notes. So, uh, bear with me. But, uh, so if you want the links, they're not going to be on the YouTube, uh, but you'll actually have to go to the podcast and look at the show notes. Uh, to put them all in there. I don't I don't think I'm going to put all on the YouTube. That would just take forever. So, arcade belt. The next to last thing 
probably should have led with this. Everybody wants to talk about boots, right? If y'all have known my story, I have, I would say, struggled finding a good pair of boots up until recently. So I started off, I bought me a what I thought were like the Mac Daddy of all boots. I bought some Zamberlins. I think they were Zamberlin links, man. They were camo pattern. They look good. And man, I tried to make those things work. Uh, but man, they would just chew the back of my heels up. I'm talking blisters on both of them. Just terrible. And I tried multiple things, different ways to tie my, my boots, different socks, um, different insoles. Nothing, nothing. I ended up giving them damn boots away uh, and ended up got recommended a pair of, of or got recommended by a friend some Loas. So I've had those Loas for three years now. And they have, I think they're Loa Baldos. So they're discontinued. Uh, and that's why I have these. I just bought these the other day. And these are Loa. Um, Camino GTXs. So, uh, in between there, I had bought a pair of crispies, uh, crispy crossovers. They were kind of a low, a low high top kind of thing. And guess what? Uh, the one on the right chewed back of my heel up. Guess what happened to them? Got rid of them too. So I bought me another pair of Loas. They didn't have the, I, I would have went back with the exact same ones that I had, but they, they discontinued them. I couldn't find them in my size. So I bought me, uh, these pair of Caminos. And I tell you what, uh, I've done a couple hikes already in them and no issues whatsoever. My feet love Loa boots. So stick with what you know. <laughs> don't, don't, uh, once you find something that works, now I do have a pair of Kinetrex that I bought that have some insulation in them that I just use for those, like we don't good to go four season elk hunting, cold weather hunts. I've got those. I have a, an older pair of Danner pronghorns that work well for me. Uh, but my go-to backpack hunting is my lower boots. Last thing that is going with me on the, uh, the hunt is going to be. Checking poles. These are some carbon ones that I got off of Amazon. Absolutely, positively love them. Now, you'll see there's two little attachments here. I will not be needing these on my archery hunting in September, maybe in October, but they're the wiser precision where you can make shooting sticks. It'll hold up together, but you can make shooting sticks with your trekking poles. So, kind of like those. Neat little thing, but always got my trekking poles, you know, they do well. So let's talk about, let's see what's next on the list. I think we're going to reorder something. Yeah. We're going to reorder because we're going to do bow and arrow. Why? Because it's sitting right there, right there. So let me reach over here, grab it. So, take the the stand off of it because this is how the bow is going with me. It's how I took it in January, and this is how I'm going to take it in uh, September. So, running my Matthews V3X, 70 pounds, 28 inches. I've got uh, an HH Tetra Max. Well, it started off life as a four-pin sight, but I really wanted a three-pin sight, so I just took one of the pins off. So I've got three-pin sight, uh, an AAE Mountain Series Carbon 12-inch uh, stabilizer on the front. No stabilizer on the back. Hadn't uh, hadn't really uh, dealt with that or, or thought I needed that. Running a QAD integrated. Uh, bow rest there. I have liked that. Been a QAD fan. I haven't ran down the Hamsky trail, but a uh, bit of QAD. And the thing I like about the QAD is I can, let me see. I'm sure you can see it. If you watch it right there, I can lock that arrow up in the up position. 
Whereas the hamski, it doesn't go up until you draw it back. So that's, I like to be able to lock it in there and be ready. That's just me. All right, let's talk about the arrows. So this is the arrow that I'm running. It is an Easton. Actually, here, let me give you the one. That was not, here's the actual setup. Veins are different, and I've got a fluorescent wrap on the back of it. So it makes it easier to find in the dark. So Easton axis or uh, Easton axis, five millimeters, uh, 300 spine. I'm running uh, an iron wheel insert or an iron wheel stainless steel collar and a sever, 125 grain sever, the 1.75 cutting width on the end of it. And then some tack veins. And that's a, I always replace my knocks, but I always run with the AAE knocks. And like I said, there's a little fluorescent wrap on the end that makes it, uh, makes it easier to find if you lose it. So total arrow weight, right at 500, right at 500 grains. And it's moving out of my bow with my setup. It's moving at about 270 feet per second. So that's the, the setup I am running. It's what, what I've, I've been running. It's my total. On, this is not going to change. Uh, we've only got one deer hunt uh, out west. So when I'm shooting whitetails back at the farm, exact same setup. Not not changing anything different. Now out west, when I'm carrying this, I do have a bow uh, a bow sling that covers the cams and the string. And that's, it's, I don't carry it with that, but it's just there to protect the end of my cams from hitting the ground uh, and protect my string. So I'd end up don't, you know, something brushing up and, and tearing up my string. So uh, I have that, that bow sling that covers all of that. I think that's about it for the bow. So give me a second and let me get set up and let's talk optics for this Arizona September archery hunt. All right, let's talk to op optics. But first, there's always something you forget, right? So I'm glad that I'm kind of doing this in, in sections and, and resetting and then getting set up for the next little section because I forgot the most, almost the most important thing out of that whole bow setup, my wrist rocket. Now, you can get into an argument with a bunch of people talking about releases and which one's the best one and all that here. I'm just going to tell you what works for me because I've been shooting a wrist rocket for 40 years. And if you have good trigger control, it works for me. Scott little goose two is what I shoot. Absolutely. Got a little single caliper. Absolutely. Love it. Got that backup in my, uh, kill kit. And here's the great thing. My hunting partner, partner, Curtis, of course, he's old as dirt too. He shoots the same one. So if something happens, uh, we can swap out releases or I have an extra one for him. I mentioned, I don't know if uh, some of y'all maybe not have heard it, but we were actually shooting together a couple months ago and we swapped each other's bows because that was a question was, what if something happened in the backcountry and one of our bows went down? Could the other person shoot the other person's bow? We're both about the same size, got the same draw length. He shoots a 65 pound bow, or I shoot a 70 pound bow. But we swapped each other's bows. We shot the other person's arrow off their bow. And then we swapped and shot our own arrows off the other person's bow. And what we found out is we were solid out to 40 yards. So it would not end a hunt if one of the bows went down. So something to think about if you're not truly solo, if you're out there with your, uh, your buddies. So going to Arizona, doing a coos slash mule deer archery hunt in September. So you think optics heavy because you're going to be doing lots of glassing. So we've been to this. This will be our third trip to this area. So we kind of got an, a ballpark idea of where to start looking. Uh, so let's talk about the optics that I'm taking. So first thing, let's get the elephant out of the room. 
the fuck, as Nicholas would call it, the Hubble telescope. This is my Vortex Viper, uh, 20 by 60, 85 millimeter angled spotter. This sucker is 5.6 pounds. You got to really want to see some stuff to take this. But we were looking for coos deer. So it very well, it served us well in January. Uh, if I was going on uh, an elk hunt, well, we went on the bear hunt in January. I didn't take it. But certain deer hunts, probably going to take this. Might even take it on the cow elk hunt in October just because it's a super open unit that we're going to. So it might come in handy. But taking this, got to lug it around the five and a half pounds and, and use that. So what am I putting it on? I'm glad you asked. So for backpacking, I have this Alpine Pro carbon sitting tripod. So it's made for when you're sitting down on the ground or maybe sitting in a, in a low chair where you can, uh, that you, you can carry it. So this thing only weighs two pounds, right? Already got my Tricer, uh, bino adapter on the top of it. So, uh, got a pan, it's got a nice little pan head on it that I really like. Um, I've used this thing. Oh, geez. At least three years. Absolutely, positively love it. Now, uh, you, you can see one leg has a few more sections in it than the other one. And the reason is, is if you're sitting on a slope, you can use that longer leg to be the first one out in front of you if you're sitting on a slope. But uh, for, for what I do, doing the backpacking stuff, two pounds, a little sitting tripod, love this one. Absolutely love it. So let's talk about these things right here. I'm not talking about my boobies. We're talking about the binos, right? So my go-to binos that I have had for several years now, is a pair of Vortex HD 12 by 50s. Now, the Hunt the Backcountry podcast Y'all have cost me some money. I know you're not listening to this podcast, but you have cost me some money. Uh, I've bought some headlamps because of you. I've bought some, several other things because of you. The the, the uh, wiser precision thing on the on the uh, trekking poles that's because of you. Uh, but you're my most favorite podcast. So they just put out a podcast. If you're not listening to them and you're a hunter, I would highly suggest, especially if you're a Western hunter, go listen to their stuff. So they just put out a podcast. They started this new thing for the next several months called the Experience Project. They did a deep dive into binoculars. And I've learned some things on that podcast. Uh, I love these 12 by 50s. I always thought the 50 gathered more light and maybe it does a little bit, but I think I might rent a pair of Swarovski NL Pure 10 by 42s and take those to Arizona too. In addition to kind of compare them to these, uh, one of our friends, Nick Banker, who's going on the hunt with us, I was talking to him because I was going to rent a pair of Swaro 15 by 56s. Uh, I think they're SLCs. And he's like, hey, I got a pair. If you want to try them, I'll bring them out there. Uh, so going to try his 15 powers, which supposedly is like the cat's meow when you're looking for coos deer. Going to try those. Going to take old faithfuls. But uh, also going to try that NL Pure. 10 by 42 because supposedly the, the, the 10 by 42 gives you a wider, wider field of vision. There's several good things about it. Go listen to that, uh, binocular. And actually I think they have it on YouTube also, but go listen to that hunt the back country podcast and listen to that episode about binos. I love these. They work great. Even whitetail hunting. They're a little much, but sometimes I'm trying to count points or I'm trying to make sure it's not a nubbin buck, and these work really, really good. Mount it right on that little tripod there, and 
you know, super, super good. The, my range finder, a SIG 3K range finder with a lighted reticle, uh, for all the stuff that I do. Love it. Absolutely love it. I made me this little, uh, uh, paracord little harness. So if I drop it, it's still there. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, goes right here in this little pouch. Here on the side of the pouch is what? A wind checker. Always got to have my wind checker. Uh, so this is a marsupial gear, uh, fully enclosed bino harness. Here in the front, I've got some uh, lens cleaners and, and that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing that I have, too, I felt it in here, is, so here is the bino adapter for my uh, MagView uh, digiscoping. It just fits right on, this fits right on the back of my binocular. I love it because this is my regular phone case, and on the back is just the plate that that thing sticks to. And get it off there. Hang on there. Technical difficulty. Knock the microphone over. Just get her back up and running. There it goes. She's back up. Test, test, test. Yep, she's still running. Now knock, knock it over again. Pull this off. And what's on the back of my spotting scope? My mag view adapter. So I can just slap my phone onto here, the digiscope. I could slap it onto my binoculars if I've got it uh, on the tripod. I love the little mag view thing. There's no big clunky phone case. I'm using the exact same phone case that I normally use. Just put the little adapter on the back of it. Bada bing, bada boom. Marsal marsupial bino harness. Love it. We've got the rangefinder pouch. I've got an extra pouch if I want to carry anything a little extra in there. Uh, could be anything. Uh, elk, I originally bought it from when we were elk hunting. This is where I kept my elk calls was in here. Um, this replaced, of course, buying the Vortex. I got the, the original Vortex glass pack. That didn't last very long. Then I bought a, a FHF gear uh, bino harness. Um, it worked okay, but I wasn't a super big fan. I actually gave it to Nicholas. Uh, my youngest son, and I bought this one, and I have absolutely positively loved this. I love how it opens to the front. You got your binos right there. You can close it back. It can be pretty nice and quiet. Love the bino harness. So let's see what else is on the list. Oh, 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 oh. Here it is. Sitting pad. Oh, this is actually two of them. That's an extra piece. So this is my sitting pad right here. So two things I can keep it double thickness, depending on how rocky the terrain is, before I can put it out. You know, whether it's wet, whether it's rocky, whatever it is, got my little sitting pad. Uh, and this was just one of those uh sleeping pads at Walmart that we bought we cut up into chunks for everybody and uh absolutely pretty paramount pretty much like that one so right quick the spotter was 5.6 pounds the tripod was two pounds something I didn't cover I'll cover it right quick the bow the whole bow setup carrying it is 7.3 pounds with that whole bow so it's really equivalent to about what my rifle is All right, so that's the plan. That's the gear, all the gear for, you know, what we're looking at is a two to three backcountry, living off your back, going to hunt coos deer, mule deer in Arizona. Now, when we were there in January, we didn't have to go in the backcountry to find them. We were able to hunt from camp to go and, and find the the. We were hunt, we shot, hunted mule deer and coos deer, saw both almost the same place. So we're obviously going to go back and check that spot, right? 
So what about what about carrying my pack if I'm not going back for two or three days? It's just a day outing. Well, the sleep system, all the sleep system, gone. Don't need to take that. The most of the food need, you know, maybe a meal and some snacks. Take that, but everything else, gone. The uh clothes, the spare clothes, probably gonna keep the jacket, maybe keep the uh the grid fleece, maybe not, uh, depending on what the weather is. But most of that stuff is gone. You know, I don't need my sitting pad anymore. Now, there is two changes that I will make this year if we're going just for the day. Number one, lose my sit my short sitting top tripod. I lose that and I replace it with this longer carbon fiber uh, tripod. Now, this one has a ball head on it. I can change this out and put my pan head on it. And that's what I usually do. Uh, I also bought this because I could shoot off this with a rifle. I've got a clamp that I can put on here. But uh, so in September, if we're just going out for the day, just going to go to one of the rock knobs and glass from there. Taking this one. Why? Because we set this over here. I bought this Nemo moonlight chair that breaks down thank you nicholas banker uh it breaks down it's super light and i could sit in this and then literally put the tripod legs two over my side one up the front and i could sit in that it's a little more comfortable than sitting on the ground and i can gl spend long periods of time sitting in this chair and glassing so if we're just going out for the day taking this set up, not the short tripod, uh, and all that other stuff. And probably, you know, it's probably going to only be with water and food, 25 pound pack probably. So it's all about where we got to go to find the deer. So like I told you, what is the stuff that I lost from my pack? What do I no longer take anymore? I told you about the stuff that I replaced with something else, right? Anytime that I replaced it, I, I told, I kind of made a point to tell you what I, what I, what I replaced and what I replaced it with. So here's some stuff and you can kind of get an idea. You, we talk about you pack your fears, right? So, uh, the stuff that I lost from the pack, number one, I don't have it in here, but, uh, a flashlight. I have my duty flashlight that I carry. And an extra battery for it. So I would carry that the flashlight this goes to, which was a, it's a, um, it's a, a nightstick flashlight, man. Great flashlight, six hours runtime on that rechargeable flashlight. And then I carry an extra recharge. I was, I was carrying an extra rechargeable battery because I thought I needed this flashlight. Um, then I realized I really didn't need that, that flashlight had a good solid headlamp. And at one point I was carrying two headlamps. So down to one hand lamp, just running the Phoenix, not carrying the flashlight anymore. Uh, the other thing that uh, I'm not carrying is on this hunt, what goes in this, my pistol. I have a Glock 48 that uh, I carried uh, in January and just realized the chances of a mountain lion attacking me uh, are probably pretty slim. We're not. There are some bears in this country, but I'm really not concerned with a black bear at all. Uh, there may be some future hunts that I carry the pistol, uh, but not going to take it here in September. Not really worried about that. So not taking the pistol. Um, I used to carry a Leatherman. Now the Leatherman will be in the, the tote back at camp, but I'm not taking it in my pack anymore. I don't ever have not had a call to use it. So not going to take it. Uh, had used to take a bag full of extra AAA batteries for the light or for the headlamp, for the radios and all that. Now I've kind of got it. Most of my stuff is rechargeable with the exception of the, of the radios. I just carry an extra set for that. And there we go. Uh, told you I carried an extra headlamp. I used to carry chem lights, 
we use these in the in the Marines all the time to, to mark stuff. So I, I'd have three or four of these chem lights in my pack. And my idea was like, oh, if we killed something, you know, we hung it up, well, I could crack a chem light and hang it up and we'd be easier to find it. Now with your phone, I could just drop a pin and we can go navigate right back to it. So uh, don't need a chem light. I hadn't hadn't been carrying any chem lights. Uh, so I had a military poncho that I would carry. These things are, they don't roll up very small and they're probably a couple pounds. Uh, I thought I would use it as a, as a sunshade. Never did. Ended up going with that uh, traverse tarp that's much lighter than that thing is. And it doesn't have a hole in the middle where your head goes. So uh, ditched my military poncho. It doesn't even go in the, it doesn't even go in the tote. I've got a whole, I've got a whole nother bin in the other room of stuff that doesn't get used that often. You probably got a bin like that or a storage bag or something like that. It's your house too. Um, and last thing I, I mentioned it before, I don't take a solar charger anymore in the back country. I used to, but those batteries stay charged for days. In fact, any hunting trip that I've been on, I carry two of them. I leave one at camp and I use it at camp to recharge my stuff at camp. And then I have one of my hunting stuff that I use to recharge my stuff when I'm out, out hunting, even take it when, if we just go out for the day, because you never know when your cell phone might need to be charged up or something like that. So I always carry one of them with me. Uh, but, um, no solar panel anymore. I have one. And if some, you know, some reason calls or I, I might need to take it, I have one, but it's, Again, in the bin in the other room and the stuff that doesn't get used a whole lot. So you can kind of see if you look at a theme there, evidently, uh, I don't like to be in the dark either. <laughs> so, uh, I hope that this has, uh, been an entertaining podcast for those of you watching and listening. Uh, if you've got any uh, comments, please reach out to me. You can DM me on the Instagram, uh, which is uh, the Salty Act, or, of course, there's a Dark Archer 159 that's more the hunting stuff, if you want to go check that out, uh, or the Salty Act at gmail.com. All right, it's been a fun time. Now I've got to sit down and put all this together for y'all and get it out. All right, guys and girls, y'all have fun. Uh, have a fun summer. Be safe. Go catch some fish and get ready for hunting season. Our trip's in eight weeks. Talk to y'all guys and girls later. Game over, man. It's game over.